even though there was all these elements, it was still not enough for me. And that's how much blinded I was because I had the proof. Yet, I'm still an idiot. I've been searching my whole life. I was, life is a journey, not a search. Hi guys, it's Max Varam, Water Magic. First of all, you don't become enlightened. That's the first thing. You are enlightened. It's just a word to used to describe the undescribable, to describe your very nature. What I did uh, is pretty much what you did as well. Um, not in the, in the exact terms or facts, but I've been searching my whole life. I was very, very, very sad my whole life. I was quite unhappy as a child, not just unhappy, I had good moments too, but I was not a happy child. Um, people always flocked around me uh, for advice, for, 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 I don't know, for just a nice presence, I guess, so I don't know, uh, which I always liked. Um, for peace, quiet, I don't know, stuff like that. Even when I was just a young kid, as, as I remember, just, I don't know, five, six years old. Um, but when I was seven or eight years old, I'm never sure anymore, actually. It's funny, because you kind of forget that stuff. I was raped. Um, and that's what I see as the starting point of, of my search. Because, well, as I've mentioned in another video already, I was, when that happened, uh, during the act, it's like I was out of my body. It, 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 I wasn't out of my body, but I just, it was so clear that it wasn't happening to me. It's like I could see myself from afar. I didn't, that was imagination, but it, it, and it was clear that this wasn't imagination. It was just a first glimpse of, huh, I just wanted to escape, I guess this moment <laughs> which you can't but then the mind being so powerful then you can imagine many things so anyway i that made me i felt i was wrong for it because i shouldn't have been i shouldn't have been outside at that time it was just midday or something and it was a beautiful sunny day i remember but i don't know um when i came back home, I felt really wrong because I wasn't back in time <laughs> for lunch. So, um, it was, it really was a horrible moment. But then again, you know, life continues. But there was always this, as I grew up, there was always this heaviness that I felt of myself, if that makes sense. I was looking for something else. I was never really appreciating the moment because I wanted to escape this moment. That's what I've always wanted to do. So I tried many, many, many things. When I was 15 years old, I had to stop basketball, which I loved. That was the center of my life, really. And at the same time, my girlfriend back then, whom I was really in love with, she just, well, ended things, which was the right thing to do, you know, it's not, but that shattered my world, my pillars were just gone because I was holding on to this extreme pleasure, the highs of a relationship of playing basketball. So I went to see a shrink when I was 15, 16 years old, I had some medication and I went to see other therapists as the years went by because I still wasn't fine. So I went in and out of depression for 
my God, let's say from 15 years old to 30, roughly. So for 15 years. That's my search right there. I looked for love in a relationship, thinking, thinking it could fix me. I looked to fix people, to make them feel good. Because I wanted to feel good. And because it was so obvious to me that some people don't feel fine and they kind of looked for it. You know, they just flocked around me. <laughs> girls a lot. <laughs> men too, men too, but girls a lot, especially back then. And I used to love to play that role of the fixer, of saving the world. I went to different yoga retreats back in my late, well, late, late 20s, early 30s, yeah. Um, I went, I did some energy healing, Reiki. I went in, into the whole spiritual, pardon my French, but bullshit of uh, the new age spirituality, you know, so all this, uh, this higher self and this, and just being an angel and, uh, and and being here for a reason, for a purpose and stuff like that. I didn't stay there too long, six to nine months, but that was really, really intense. And I had actually had really great moments in it as well. But yeah, I was, before that, a few years before that, I was diagnosed with many, many things because I thought I started to, re to, well, not to realize that, but to think, when, when I was around maybe 17, 18, I started to think that my brain was wrong. I mean, if it's not me, right, it's got to be my brain. So I looked into my brain, not from a physical aspect, although I also had like some MRIs and stuff like that to tell me like, look, it's all normal. I had some IQ tests done. The first one showed, <laughs> I did it at, at the moment that I was very depressed. <laughs> and the first one showed like a quite an average um, IQ, which I thought, Huh, it proves me it proves me right. My brain is wrong. I am wrong. I am stupid. Right? Things like that. And that was such a big part of my suffering. I wanted to change the way my brain worked because I wanted to fit, because I didn't want to be alone, because I because because there must be something wrong with me that I can fix. And I was so persistent. And you see that's the thing, persistence. In a way, that's what you need to wake up, but not in the sense that you search. That's the paradox. You need to want to wake up. You need to have this will to realize the suffering is not the life that I want. It's not even that, not that life is not meant to be like this, although it's not meant to be like this, but it's not in the sense there's a purpose, it should be, no, it's just, is it what you want? Like, ask yourself this, is this what you want? So, and persistent in that way. But then the other way is that at some point, <laughs> you have to realize that this search is the suffering. That this whole, it should be different, is the reason why you think there is something wrong. You emphasize there's something wrong. So you experience it as if there is something wrong because you try to feel good. You try to be happy. In truth, you are. You only think think you're not but anyway so I had this second IQ test made by a neuropsychologist I think call her like that uh, like maybe three years later or something like that two three years later I didn't even know she was doing an IQ test until I realized that that was that was it and then it showed a much higher <laughs> result, much higher. And even though I could see the results, like in my eyes, and, and, and I, 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 she told me all her comments, she told me basically you're what you call pretty much, not a genius in that way, but, but even though there was all these elements, it was still not enough for me. And that's how much, how much blinded I was because I had the proof. I'm not wrong. My brain is not wrong. On the contrary, in a way, right? Yet, I'm still an idiot. Or, I'm still wrong. I still should be different. 
So I quit this job that I hated. I just quit it. From a day to another. <laughs> I didn't even give my resignation. <laughs> Guys, if you're watching, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but um, it's one of the best decisions I ever made. Because I stopped forcing myself down the road that wasn't my way that didn't fit, that I didn't like. And so I went to walk on the Camino de Santiago in France and Spain. That's where I met my amazing wife, partner, my everything. And um, when I went there, I was like, no girls, because I had someone in mind and I wanted to, I was still looking for love, like, eh. <laughs> I, um, I went walking for about a thousand miles, met her after a week walking, so we, we walked pretty much all the way together. We met amazing, amazing people, it was a great experience. I would say I started to wake up that not I didn't know the truth of who I was and far from it and I was still in the spiritual bullshit but I started to wake up to the fact life doesn't have to be a suffering and after that I went to see some and my wife Amy had this experience at some point of that's an item, that's it. She recognized everything as they are. And I was so jealous, like so jealous. And at the same time, good for her, I was happy for her, but I thought, why not me? I wanted to be the enlightened one. <laughs> Makes no sense. But I went to see, so we traveled from Nepal, I went to India to see this guru, to whom she's a bad, bad teacher, because she doesn't want to be a teacher, it's obvious. I don't know why she does it. But I'll always be thankful to her because her bad pointing made me wake up because I realized no it can't be it and I recognized the truth of who I was when I was 32 33 I had a lot of glimpses but I was done with that when I was 33 yeah <laughs> and um I wasn't done suffering yet, but there was a massive relief. And I, like, that's it. The ground was there. I know. That I don't know. There's nothing to search for. But then, you know, the habits of the mind, the patterns of suffering, really, was still there. A lot more easily seen. So, just woke up because I wanted to, to realize no, none of this suffering has to be there. The whole questions are question of intelligence, of love, of, of, of seeking, of not seeking, of no, you don't. And it's uh, maybe a couple months later, so after recognizing the truth of who I was, that I realized, I said, Amy. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wake up people. And she said, now that's about time. <laughs> Good. She's always known how to do that because it's my gift. I've always been doing it, except before I didn't know the truth of who I was. I, I wasn't enlightened, right? I wasn't, I was still suffering. So all I could do was basically being a therapist, being a good friend, you know? But I always saw so clearly. I always knew how to 
switch things for people. So that's how I woke up, really. I switch things for myself. And it took a lot of facing my demons. And I say facing, it's not like you have to go for it, right? But that's how it did for me. I had to see it again and again, realize the bullshit of it, the non-truth, the non-existence of it, that's just imagination, see it again and again for it to go. Up until at some point, a few months later, it's about a year and a half ago now. Yeah, something like that. We were high on E <laughs> with my lovely wife a Saturday evening. And for a couple of days, I had this nagging in my mind that was, huh, but it's just a thought. What I'm thinking is just a thought. I'm noticing something in my body, but it's just a thought again. I don't even need to notice that. I don't even need to notice that. It's a thought. Huh, okay. I wasn't clear on that yet, but something was like, ooh, cooking. So, you know, it's happening. Can't stop it, can't force it. And I was enjoying it, you know. So, okay, that evening then, we were high on E and I realized It's just a thought. All of it. Do you hear what I'm saying now? So, I said to my wife, Amy, what do you think is just a thought? And she was like, but yeah. I'm like, no, no, stay with me. That is just a thought. That as well. Now tell me, what isn't a thought? And she was like, wow, that's it. I was done. There was still some remainders of suffering afterwards, but it didn't last long. That was so clear, you know, it just went, it just went. I had to see some things a few times again, but that was it. The end of suffering. As I knew the, tr the truth of, of who I was a few months before, I mean, there was, the suffering was mild, you know, there was just mainly enjoying life already, you know, like really. The shift was there, but that was the the end of a shift, if that makes sense. And I'd like to, word, to, word, to use the word shift because it seems like something needs to happen. No, you are awake. It's just a realization. And I said, that's how I'm going to help people wake up. And I started to write the words of magic and to test it on people. It's been a ride for a bit more than a year now. And it's amazing. It works with everybody that wants to wake up. Everybody. Beautifully. Free to enjoy life. Because that's the end game. There's no state of enlightenment. There's no non-dual state. There's no spiritual state. There's no being here called Max that is enlightenment. But then you cut the crap. That's a thought as well. Why couldn't you say you're enlightened if you know you're done with it? You're just done with it. That's what I mean. You have to go beyond non-duality, spirituality, those concepts, ideas, thoughts. This, it's just another religion. <laughs> it's just another religion, guys. And if it helps you, good. Don't get me wrong. But it's just pointers. Just like this story I've been telling you. It all happens. But it's just a story. Where is it right now? Nowhere. It doesn't matter. Because what you want is to do what you love, what you're passionate about. And it's not that you need to be passionate about one thing. And if, if today you think, oh, I'm not passionate about anything, there are things you like, naturally. What you like is what you do without questioning if you like it or not. And that's what you want. That's what you really want. No suffering, only enjoying. I don't feel emotions anymore today. No guilt. No anger. No fear, not really. No sadness. 
But here's the thing. There is always the possibility for it to rise because it's life. And because you, once you know that, you stop fighting it. And if you're sad, it's okay. If you're unhappy, so-called, it's okay. You'll start realizing again and again the bullshit until you realize it doesn't ever have to be. But there is always the possibility for it to arise. If something happens to my wife tomorrow, I don't expect to be stuck, right? Of course, that's how it is. What would you think of it? Life is a journey, not as such. There is no suffering. And all it takes is for you to realize that, to see it once, once. That's it. Thank you. I love you all. If you like the video, please give it a like, give it a share, a comment. And if you want to be free of suffering once and for all, for your story to be seen as it is, a story, not even there anymore. Give me a shout. I'll free you once and for all. Go free yourself. I'll point you to it. Guaranteed. I do love you all. Thank you very much for watching. Bye now.